Hello everyone. So in today's video, I will be talking about diphtheria and including the definition, um, the transmission, the clinical manifestations, the pathophysiology, um, the risk factors and complications, the diagnosis, treatment, management, the prevention, and lastly, the prognosis. So if you want to learn more about this video, um, please do continue watching and let's get started. So in definition, diphtheria is a serious bacterial infection that usually affects the mucous membranes of the nose and the throat. And the infection can result in respiratory or cutaneous disease. And it is from a Greek word, um, diphtheria, which means leather or hide. And the causative agent of this disease is the Carnobacterium diphtheria or Carnobacterium ulcerans. And its incubation period is usually two to five days. And it is an aerobic gram positive uh, bacillus. And Carnobacterium diphtheria makes a toxin that causes people to get a very sick. So this is an example uh, photo of the Corneobacterium diphtheria under a microscopic view and the uh, respiratory diphtheria. So there are two types of diphtheria. One is the respiratory diphtheria and the other one is cutaneous diphtheria. So respiratory diphtheria is um, represented as a sore throat with a low-grade fever and membrane attached to the tonsils, pharynx, and the nose. And the next swelling is usually present in severe diseases. And in respiratory diphtheria, it can lead to uh, severe breathing problems, heart failure, blood disorder, paralysis, coma, and even death. And in cutaneous diphtheria, um, also this is rare and is most often seen among persons with poor hygiene who live in crowded conditions. Um, the skin infections with diphtheria are still common in tropical countries and are um, more contagious than respiratory diphtheria. And the skin wounds are characterized by a scaling rash, sores, or by blisters, which can occur anywhere on the body. And skin wounds may uh, be painful, swollen, and um, reddened. So in respiratory diphtheria, uh, the bacteria most commonly infect the respiratory system, uh, which includes body parts involved in uh, breathing. And then when the uh, bacteria gets into and attached to the lining um, of the respiratory system, it can cause a weakness, sore throat, um, mild fever, and swollen glands in the neck. And the bacteria makes a toxin or a poison that kills healthy tissues in the uh, respiratory system. And within two to three days, uh, the dead tissue forms a thick gray coating called the pseudomembrane. And it can build up in the throat or in the nose. And it can cover tissues in the nose, tonsils, and vo voice box, and even in the throat. And it makes very hard to breathe and to swallow. And if the toxin gets into the bloodstream, it can cause heart, nerve, and kidney damage. And then the bacteria can also infect the skin, causing open sores or ulcers. However, um, diphtheria skin infections rarely uh, result in any other severe diseases. So here is an example photo in the respiratory diphtheria and in the cutan cut cutaneous diphtheria, I'm sorry. Next is the transmission of the uh, disease. 
So um, in way of transmitting the disease, it is um, one is from airborne droplets. So when an infected person sneezes or cough releases a mist of contamination droplets where people nearby may inhale the bacteria. And then diphtheria spreads easily this way and especially in crowded conditions. So the transmission is often person to person spread from the respiratory tract and rarely transmission may occur from skin lesions or um, articles sold with discharges from lesions of the infected persons or deformities. And diphtheria is caused by the bacterium, um, carnium bacterium diphtheria, and it usually multiplies on or near the surface of the throat. So another is contaminated person or household items. So people occasionally catch diphtheria from handling and infected person's things that may be um, contaminated with the uh, bacteria. And touching an infected wound or open ulcers can also transfer um, the diphtheria causing uh, bacteria. And um, People who have been infected by the diphtheria bacteria and who haven't been treated can infect people who haven't had diphtheria vaccine, um, even if they don't show any symptoms. So the clinical manifestations of diphtheria is, um, in the respiratory diphtheria, there is a mild fever, sore throat, difficulty swallowing, malaise, a loss of appetite, and hoarseness. And in the cutaneous diphtheria um, includes scaling rash, ulcers, and skin lesions. So let's talk about the pathophysiology of the disease. So human caries are the main reserva of infection. And however, case reports have linked the disease to uh, livestock. And the infected patients and asymptomatic carriers can transmit uh, the bacteria, diphtheria via respiratory droplets, nasopharyngeal secretions, and rarely formities. So, um, the C. diphtheria adheres to the mucosal epithelial cells where the exotoxin released by endosomes cause a localized inflammation reaction followed by tissue destruction and necrosis. So the toxin is made of two joint proteins and the B fragments binds to a receptor on the surface of the susceptible host cell, which proteolytically, which proteolytically cleaves the um, membrane lipid layer, enabling segment A to enter. And there will be an activation of elongating factor and then results in protein synthesis, blockage, and subsequent cell death. So there will be a local tissue destruction that enables the toxin to be carried lymph lymphatically and hematologically to other parts of the body. And um, elaboration of the diphtheria toxin may affect distant organs, such as in the myocardium, which causes myocarditis, um, the kidneys, which causes nephritis, and in the nervous system, which is the neuritis. So next is we'll be talking about the risk factor of the disease. So most uh, in risk are children and adults who don't have up-to-date uh, vaccinations and people living in crowded or unsanitary conditions where they, where they get the bacteria from. 
and anyone who travels to an area where diphtheria infections are more common. So diphtheria is still common in developing countries where vaccination rates are low. And in this area where diphtheria vaccination is a standard, the disease is mainly a threat to unvaccinated or inadequately vaccinated people who travel internationally or have contact with people from less uh, developed countries. So the complications from respiratory diphtheria when the bacteria infects parts of the body um, involved in breathing may um, include airway blockage, damage to the heart muscles, nerve damage, loss of the ability to move or paralysis, and kidney failure. And for some people, um, respiratory diphtheria can lead to um, death. And even with treatment, about one to 10 patients with respiratory diphtheria will possibly die. And without treatment, up to half of patients can die from the uh, disease. So the diagnosis of the disease diphtheria is, um, is usually made on the basis of clinical presentation since it is imperative to begin presumptive therapy quickly. So, um, the polymerase chain reaction, or the PCR, is where in the growth of the bacteria in a laboratory culture of material from the throat membrane pins down uh, the diagnosis. And then a doctor would take a sample of tissue from the infected wound and have it tested in a laboratory for the cutaneous uh, diphtheria. I'll also note other tests for diagnosing diphtheria are commercially available. The CDC can perform the PCR tests on clinical specimens to confirm uh, the infection with toxigenic strain. Um, another is a ground staining or Albert's staining and serological tests. So the serological test, uh, a demonstration of a fourfold rise in antibody in paired sera samples collected 10 to 14 days apart. And then the both samples are to be collected before the administration of either diphtheria toxide or antitoxin. Using either indirect um, IHA test or enzyme link um, or ELISA test. And then there is also a culture test where there is a biotyping um, toxigenicity testing or the ELEX test and the antibiotic susceptibil susceptibility test by a minimum inhibitory concentration or the E test method. Next is the treatment of uh, the disease diphtheria. So um, if a doctor suspects uh, diphtheria, a treatment begins immediately, even before the results of bacterial tests are available. And diphtheria is a serious illness, and doctors treat it immediately and aggressively. So there, is, there are antibiotics such as penicillin and erythromycin to help kill bacteria in the body, uh, clearing up the infections. And antibiotics cut the time that someone with diphtheria is contagious. Antitoxin is also available if a doctor suspects uh, to diphtheria. Uh, they will request a medication that counteracts the um, diphtheria toxin in the body from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. So the diphtheria antitoxin, um, it neutralizes toxin before it enters the cell. And the dose um, given depends on site of infection. And 
length of time the patient is symptomatic. Next is the management. So in managing um, a patient with diphtheria, so treatment uh, involves administering diphtheria antitoxin to neutralize uh, the effects of the toxin and antibiotics to kill the bacteria. Administration of diphtheria antitoxin at the earliest is the most important element in the treatment of the diphtheria, especially in the respiratory diphtheria. So in addition to antitoxin, every case should be treated with appropriate antibiotics, respiratory support, and airway maintenance should also be provided as needed. And the disease is usually not contagious 48 hours after the antibiotics are um, administered. So next is the prevention. So the only um, effective way to prevent diphtheria in children is to provide active um, immunization to all children. Um, the single antigen diphtheria vaccine is not available. So um, the vaccine is normally given at combination with other vaccine as DPT vaccine or pentavalent vaccine. And DPT is recommended as uh, they have five doses. So the three doses are given at six, 10, and 14 weeks, and two, boost, and two boosters, doses um, 16 to four, 24 months and five to six years of age. And for adolescents and adults with diphtheria toxoid is frequently combined with um, tetanus toxoid in lower concentration. So for the unvaccinated indiv individuals, seven years of age and older, um, the World Health Organization re recommends that TD combination vaccine can be administered um, in two doses and one to two months apart and after six to 12 months. So subsequent boosters are usually used at at least one year apart for a total of five doses to obtain long-term protection. And a booster dose of tetano tetanus and diphtheria toxide containing vaccine should be administered to adults who have completed a primary series and, and it is last, and if the last vaccination was received, honestly. Uh, So next is the prognosis of the disease. And the prognosis of diphtheria ranges from a good to poor, and it's depend upon how early in the infection the patient is treated and on how the patient responds to the treatment. And if the patient develops sepsis or bacteremia, or if there's a cardiac involvement, the prognosis is usually poor. So thank you so much. Um, so that ends my presentation. Um, I hope you've learned a lot from it and I'll see you on my next videos. Bye.